Okay, it's now in the morning. I've let this clear coat dry overnight. And I've also, of course, let the silicone dry overnight. Just put this little bit of tape on there to keep those wires trained while um, I put this back up on the shed. See, then you can see how I've done the wiring. Soldered into these holes that I made. Siliconed over, just plug these ones up because obviously there's no connections to them. But before we put it back up, we'll give it a ground test. So I'm measuring the short circuit current. Sun is over this way. But as you can see, let's see, the panel, although the sun's coming out, coming out quite well, the panel is pretty much pointing in the opposite direction of the sun. So we're not going to get much current. But the main point is, is that the current is fairly uniform across all the sections, each string, as I said before. So we've got string number one. Two hundred and six milliamps. String number two, two hundred and seven, and string number three, two hundred and twelve. Now, string number three is probably actually performing slightly better on the short circuit current test because, after all, there are a few less solar cells for the current to go through. But of course, short circuit current actually means nothing. When we initially tested this faulty panel straight at the output here, we could observe an open circuit voltage of about 42 volts and a short circuit current of about 3 or so amps. So it was suggesting that the panel was perfectly okay, but because of these diodes, a panel can supply a good short circuit current and a good open circuit voltage. Well, it's mainly because of the dies for the short circuit current, not so much for the voltage, and lead you to believe that everything's okay when it's not. As soon as you try and draw some watts from it, so you want a current and a voltage, things turn pear-shaped. So, the best way to check that it's actually working is to use a bulb, because a bulb, of course, to operate needs both volts and amps. You know, in other words, it's a wattage device. So, although the meter can be tricked the bulb can't and since as you saw it's such a low current due to the lack of insulation on the panel I'm using a small bulb instead of my much larger test bulb but the point again we're looking for is uniformity across the strings so string number one string number two and string number three and that's what I'm talking about there we go. So we're done. The repairs work, so all that's left to do is to cap up this and throw it back up on the shed. I don't believe I need to make a video of that with the cover on it. So the next one I show will probably just be up on the shed or with the clamp meter. Probably later on today. I've got to go out this morning, so. We'll just get this up, that'll be enough. Time is marching on. Okay, the panel's now back up on the roof. I haven't screwed it in yet or done a little bit of siliconing on the top that I'm going to probably do around that really broken bit, but it's back up on the roof. So let's check the ammeter. Without it connected, it's not connected yet. We're reading five amps. And all that twitch, that's just the regulator doing its thing. There we go, five amps. So it's going to plug it in. Hopefully that sun stays good while we're doing it. I mean, a little bit of a pesky cloud, okay. Up the ladder. MC4s. A one-handed MC4. Well, I get the satisfactory stiff click that we all like to hear when we plug these buggers in. There we go, it's in. Okay, wonderful. Tidy that up later. Okay. Oh, and look at that. What a reward. 
over seven amps, I think, getting up to pretty much, well no, just under seven amps. But a very good result, I think, for this panel at this time of the day. I'm pretty happy with that. If I stuck the clamp meter on, we'd actually see the true picture of what's going on here. And what I suspect is that the back panel, not because it's an undamaged panel, but because it's under the best angle for the sun, will be doing the lion's share of the amps. Yeah, there we go, 3.34, 3.39, yeah. It's doing the most. And the, the middling panel, which of course is another one of these broken panels that's been fixed, there we go, 1.75. And the newly fixed one, it's got quite a few less cells, 1.48. That's almost doing as much as the middle panel, almost doing as that one, it's almost doing as much as that one, almost. Only 300 milliamps in it. The voltage has just jumped up above 25 now. I'm happy. I'm happy with that work. Oh look, current's getting up to seven and a half amps. Awesome. Our cloud's coming over, current's dropping, but of course it will be dropping even more if it wasn't for that extra panel. Who knows, I might just about be able to retire the boost converter. The boost converter you ask, yes this is the boost converter. It's still sort of in a breadboard prototype stage which will probably stay forever. This basically allows me to pump excess voltage from the 12 volt system into this 24 volt system when I need to. But I probably won't need to so much now with that extra panel running. It'd be nice to see what it's like in the around the time of the solar noon. It'd be really nice to see then. Alright. Well, it'll keep this motley collection of batteries that makes up my 24 volt system in this shed going. They're all gel cells. Sticker controller, I'm real starting to get real happy with these. There's they seem to just keep these batteries charged and without any problems. Even when you do things like um, nasty Zan mods to boost the current output and stuff like that and start hooking other bits and pieces up to it, they just they just go. Yeah. Well, it looks like the fridge has just kicked in. Oh, there we are. That's the um new, well it's not new is it, the newly refurbished old panel. I suppose I can do one more tail, I suppose I will, once I put the silicone on there and put the screws in I'll just do a quick flickety flick. And now I better get going because the hour is late. 